Well, good morning, friends. I'm Pastor Charles Anderson reminding you that God is good all the time and that all the time, God is good. Welcome to worship this morning here at Clear Lake United Methodist Church. This morning, we're beginning a church-wide series we're calling The Key Event. Now, let me explain what that means. You see, as Christians, we believe that Jesus of Nazareth is not only the key actor in human history, he is also the key event in human history. That is, He is the most pivotal action that God has ever taken. Therefore, when we experience and understand the four events in Jesus' life, what you and I call Christmas, Good Friday, Easter, and Pentecost, those events actually take place once again, and the key event that is Jesus Christ becomes our own personal pivot. So, for the next four Sundays, we'll celebrate and study each of the four great events in the life of Jesus. To underline how each event is celebrated in the Christian church, each week will be decorated in accordance with its holiday, with songs, with acts of worship, with decoration that bring the holiday to life. A different worship team will also design and lead worship each week. For example, the traditional team is designing today and our contemporary team is designing next week. So this morning we begin with the Christmas event of God with us. So let's prepare to worship.
friends. It's wonderful to be with you this Sunday morning. Well, today I wanted to talk about something great. Christmas. No, Miss Jenny didn't flip her lid, but I just love Christmas. And I'm real excited about the sermons I'm going to hear in our key event series, in which the pastors will talk about key events in Jesus' life, as well as our own too. Christmas is an amazing time of cooler weather, yes please, <laughs> lighted trees, gifts, and some pretty great decorations of all sorts. I know it takes some people days, even weeks, to get their homes decorated just right for Christmas. But shortly after Christmas, we have to undecorate. That means all the sparkly lights and all the super great decorations get boxed up and put away. But does that mean Christmas is over? No way. I suppose according to the calendar, it says Christmas is over after December 24th. But from a spiritual standpoint, Christmas is never, ever over. That's right. The joy and the hope that Jesus brought into the world that amazing night should never be packed up, no matter what the calendar says. So my friends, I always want you to remember, you can pack away and put up the decorations, but never, never pack away your faith because you will need it all year round. And now my friends, Please join me as I pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the hope, the joy, and the wonder that is our Savior, Jesus Christ. May we always keep his birth in our hearts. In your magnificent name we pray. Amen.
morning, friends. I'm Pastor Preston. And as we gather this morning, we invite you to visit clearlakemethodist.org slash here to find all of the links you need for participating in worship this morning. You'll be able to mark your attendance, share your gifts, and explore this morning's announcements. Today is the Sunday before school starts in person for those who have chosen the brick and mortar option at Clear Lake City Elementary and who aren't already on campus. With this year facing challenges like never before, we need to show our support for our adopted school family by covering them in prayer. That's why this afternoon's prayer drive is so important. From 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., we invite you to mindfully drive through eight prayer stations around the school through their parking lot. The first prayer station is at the stop sign on Reseda and Torrey Pines closest to the church, and Lacey Stoley will be there to direct you to the next prayer station, all marked with signs. We recommend that you remain in your car with your flashers on to pray and be cautious of the traffic around you. While we pray for Clear Lake City Elementary, we are also supporting the students with our volunteer hours and our gifts. This week, our Clear Lake Buddies volunteers will be on the sidewalks, providing safety and support for those walking to and from school. And our office is processing the $5,000 grant that your church's leadership council approved to provide Wi-Fi hotspots for Clear Lake City Elementary families without internet in their homes. Our church has been blessed over and over through our partnership with the school. And this morning, your financial gifts through mailed checks and online gifts on our website can be a blessing to those students, teachers, and parents as well. Let us pray. Holy God, may the extension of resources from this church out into the world be an extension of the kingdom of heaven. Lord, as you have loved us, walked with us, been present with us, may we, may we also find creative ways to love, be present, and walk with the world around us. Lord, may we be representatives of you. May the Holy Spirit move through us. And may these gifts from our church body be honoring to you now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
morning. My name is Anya Lawrence. Our Bible passage for the Christmas event comes from John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. Hear now in the words of John, the key event of God with us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. May God bless this, the reading and hearing of God's Christmas good news. Amen. Let me tell you a story. In the beginning was the Word, who was with God and was God. And without Him, nothing would have been made. There would be only darkness. Before God breathed life into man and woman to care for all that was created, before there were the beast of the field to roam the earth. Before creatures of the sea and creatures of the air. Before there were markers in the sky to guide our way. Before the dry ground and fields of wheat. Before the heavens separated from the earth. Before all things were created. There was only darkness. But God spoke. Let there be light. And light was born. Spilling into the darkness bringing comfort where there's fear, hope where there's dismay, life where there's death.
this light, this word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. So that every heart can have its new beginning. This morning, as we said earlier, we begin a new sermon series called The Key Event. Remembering that Jesus is the key event in all of creation and all of our lives. And he is a key event that we can better understand and embrace if we truly understand and embrace the four key events in his life. Christmas, Good Friday, Easter, and Pentecost. As we said earlier, each Sunday, We'll stress one of these great Christian holy days, and we'll try to express that not only in the preaching and the music, but in the ways that we bring you into this time of preaching. For instance, if you look back on the screen, you'll see not only a Christmas graphic, but to your left, you'll see a stole, a liturgical stole. Stoles are what clergy oftentimes wear in a more traditional style of worship, and the colors represent a season. And each season represents an act in Jesus' life. So for Advent, the coming of Jesus at Christmas, the color is blue and the symbol is a star. Each week, Preston and I will also be preaching before a, a, a display like this, something which helps us remember once again our own experiences of that event. So today, let's look at the Christmas experience of God with us. Let's pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, because you are our rock and our redeemer. And if in the words of this one, we hear not the voice of God, then please speak to each and every one of us in the quietness of our own hearts. Amen. A couple of days before Christmas, an older man in Phoenix telephoned his adult son in New York. The father said, son, your mother and I have been married for 50 years now, and I just wanted to call and, and tell you that we've decided to get a divorce. <laughs> well, the son was stunned. Dad, that's terrible. Don't you and mom do a thing until I've had a chance to come talk some sense into you. I'll be on the next plane to Phoenix. Well, they hang up. And the son calls his sister in Chicago. He says, sis, dad just called. He told me that he and mom are getting a divorce. And his sister said, like heck they are. She hung up. She immediately telephones her dad. Dad, brother just called to say that after 50 years of marriage, you and mom have decided to get a divorce. Don't you two do a thing. So I've had a chance to talk with you. I'm on the next plane to Phoenix. Her, her father hangs up. His wife turns to him and says, what was that all about? And he said, good news, dear. Both kids are coming home from Christmas and they're paying their own way. Well, who doesn't like a visitation of love? I mean, who among us wouldn't want to hear that love itself is coming home for Christmas? And that love is pain its own way. Who among us this morning is not up for a visit from love? For instance, I remember when my dad's father died. Now, Gramps and I were particularly close. I'm even named after him. He was Charles William Anderson, and I'm Charles Walter Anderson. And I recall when he died having to deal with such an absence as death brings for the first time when it enters one's life, having to maneuver my way through that maze of what all that feels like and means. Well, after some years, I became acclimated to Gramps' absence. Then one day, I was sorting through some old cassette tapes. And for you who are younger than 40, 
you need to look up cassette tapes on Google, all right? You'll understand once you, once you read there. But I was going through some old cassette tapes I'd packed away. I'm talking old BG albums, recordings, uh, disco and other music debris from the 70s, uh, Star Wars soundtracks. Well, I came across a tape that I did not recognize. It didn't have a label on it. So I put it in the player and tapped play. A voice I had not heard for years, spoke from the speaker. You see, at some time while I was away at college, Gramps had recorded a tape for me. And now I'm hearing it more than a decade after he died. And to hear that voice again, come back beyond the years and death's chasm, well, it was a visitation of love. For me, there was just no voice that could speak like his voice. And to hear it again was love come back and love come home one more time. Who of us can't think of a voice that would be love itself come back and come home? Because sometimes there's just no voice that can speak like the voice. You know what I mean? Can, can you think of someone whose very voice is for you the visitation of love? It's perhaps that question that helps us better understand our scripture this morning. In our passage, John writes, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You see, before we ever had a visit, God had a voice. In fact, when John says word, we're to think voice. Since the beginning of time, God's been speaking. Since the dawn of dawn, God has had something to say. And the entire Bible is the story of God's insistent, persistent efforts to make us hear his voice. John says that since the beginning of the very beginning, God has been as good as God's Word. The thing is, words don't quite come alive for us until they have some flesh and blood on them, until you might say, until they have a face. For instance, a Civil War officer said that he never had understood compassion till he saw Lincoln's face as Lincoln sat by a dying soldier. There's just some words and some speech we can't fully understand until they become personified for us and, and personal to us. For instance, I recall my courses in marriage and counseling when I was in college and seminary. I mean, I took courses on family and marriage, courses on premarital counseling, courses in marriage guidance. So when I got out of seminary and went to my first appointment, my senior pastor put me in charge of doing all marriage counseling at that congregation. Now think about that. He put me, a single guy, in charge of marriage because after all, I knew all the words about marriage. But I must confess, I didn't know marriage until I stood at an altar with Lydia and said, I will. I knew the words, but I didn't know marriage until marriage had a face with Lydia. Because some words don't come alive for us until they have some flesh on them, until they have a face that goes with it. There are some truths that we can't fully understand until they become personified for us and personal to us. After Lydia and I got married, I started reading books on parenting. I didn't know this. Did you know that there are a whole lot of books on parenting out there? I mean, I know now because I read every single one of them. And I can tell you, I knew all the facts about parenthood. I had all those facts down pat. I mean, just give me a test paper and let's go. But it's one thing to study life. It's something altogether different to hold a steamy, wet newborn in your hands. I knew the facts of parenthood, but I did not know the truth of parenthood 
until I had a body with Lindsay. She made it personal. She personified the meaning of parenting for me. Well, in the beginning was the Word. But John knows some words we can't fully understand until they become personified and personal to us. Like the glory of God. I mean, how do we understand God's glory if it stays in heaven? That's how it goes with words like uh, grace and truth. We don't really understand what God's saying until the Word of God comes to us as a human being. Or to put it another way, we really can't hear the voice if we don't have the visit. We can't hear the voice if we don't have the visit, which I think is what John's trying to tell us in verse 14. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son. Watch John saying, how about this? Jesus is the voice and visitation of God all in one. How about that? Jesus is the voice and the visitation of God all in one. Jesus is love itself coming home from Christmas, and that love is pain its own way. Jesus is love come back and love come home, and who among us this morning is not up for a visitation from love? You see, when God wanted us to know everything we need to know about love, God didn't write it in a paragraph. He wrote it in a person. When God wanted to make it clear how much God loved us, God didn't say it in a sentence. God said it in a Savior. What was born at Bethlehem that night was not just a child to Mary and Joseph, but a message to you and me. John says, and the Word became flesh and lived among us. I think that's John's way of saying that at Christmas, love now has a name and a face. At Christmas, love has moved from language to life. Bethlehem, Bethlehem is God saying, I have said everything that needs to be said. In other words, Jesus personifies and personalizes everything we need to know about God. Let me say that again. Jesus personifies, He personalizes everything we need to know about God. He is the voice of God personified. He is the visit of God personalized. Everything I need to know about God, I see in Jesus of Nazareth. He is the essential essence of God. He is where God's love connects with our lives. He is where the voice and the visit come together. Now, in the church, that experience of voice meets visit has a special name. It's called incarnation. Incarnation, literally in the flesh. In fact, you might recognize part of that word, carne, as in chili con carne, chili with meat. Incarnation is faith with flesh, with meat on it. Incarnation is the God act where what is believed becomes what is real. And the church came to say, that Christmas is God's story of incarnation. Christmas is God's ongoing reminder that God is with us. In the course of time, there came a man from Nazareth named Jesus. And the people who were around him, the people who saw him, heard him, observed him, watched with him, lived with him said, he reminds me of God. He touches, He heals, He blesses, 
He forgives. He comforts. He invites everybody. God, God, Jesus is Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth has reminded us in him we recognize God. You see, that's what incarnation means. People who knew and people who know Jesus best say, when I'm in the presence of Jesus, I'm in the presence of God. Everything I need to know of God is seen in this person of Jesus. This is the basic belief behind Christmas. This is what John's gospel calls the word becoming flesh. And to be a Christian is to say, I have come to believe in the God that I have experienced in Jesus Christ. And so Christmas, well, Christmas is not just a moment in history or a date on the calendar. Christmas is a Jesus event that can happen to you at any time. Christmas is whenever and wherever people need the presence and the power of incarnation. Say to the newlyweds, moving into their first house, God is with you. Say to the hospital patient, awake all night before surgery, God is with you. Say to the older couple still rocking an empty cradle, God is with you. Say to the teenager working through all those strange new delights and dilemmas of adolescence, God is with you. Say to the loved one in whom the light of life flickers dim at the approach of death, God is with you. It's God who's with us in the birth of Jesus Christ. Now we have a face to put on grace and truth. It's Jesus who provides us the best look into God's heart. And because of Jesus, we're never cut off from love's voice or love's visit. When I was in fifth grade, I tripped and fell down the stairwell at school. I landed headfirst on the linoleum at the bottom of the stairs. In fact, I cut open a huge gash in my forehead. They had to rush me to an emergency room to get stitched back together. And I was so afraid. The blood pouring from my face and onto my clothes shocked me. The pain in my head scared me. I had all these strange doctors in this strange place doing strange things to me with needles and shots and sutures. They put a green sheet over my face, so I guess I couldn't see what they were doing, but that was kind of like being buried alive. My heart was beating in my throat. I felt small, smelt, felt lonely. I was scared. And then my dad arrived. He came into the emergency room where they were working on me. He sat down by the table there. All he did was speak my name and hold my hand. Not much really, but it calmed me down. Oh, the wound still hurt and I didn't like the shots. But you see, I heard my father's voice. I had my father's touch and that was enough. And every Christmas since then, I've thought back to that moment because really, what is Christmas? Christmas is a world caught up in its own wounds and scared by its own pain. But then the Heavenly Father comes. A child is born in Bethlehem to Mary. God calls us by name and God gives us something to hold on to. A child sleeping in a barnyard. In Jesus of Nazareth, I hear my father's voice and I have my father's touch. He is the very visitation of love. And according to John, that's enough. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we gather together on this Sabbath day to worship you as one people Though we are scattered in a variety of places, it is your Holy Spirit 
that binds us together and sustains us as your church. By your grace, may we continue to proclaim the gospel and bear witness to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Open our eyes that we might see opportunities to be your presence in the world. Open our lips that we might speak words of Christ's peace and hope to others. Guide our hands and feet that we might be your hands and feet, O Lord. Today we give thanks, Father, for the gift of your one and only Son, Jesus the Christ. Who among us can completely understand the miracle that came to all humanity in the form of an infant? We look in wonder at a young baby, seemingly frail, vulnerable, and fragile, yet filled with the possibilities and potential of life. You chose to walk among us so that we might see you, listen to your voice, and learn by your example. Your love for us was so clearly and wonderfully revealed in the life of our Savior. May we respond in kind, Lord, loving you with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving our neighbor as ourselves. For those times we have failed to do so and have grieved your heart, we humbly ask for your forgiveness. Knowing your grace is sufficient and that Christ lovingly intercedes on our behalf. We lift up to you, Lord, the sick, the hungry, the homeless, the poor, the unemployed, the lonely, and those who do not know you. Hear these our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We want to end this morning with Silent Night from last year's Christmas Eve candlelight service. But before we do, thank you for joining us for Christmas in September. Next week, we will continue our key event series with a focus on Good Friday. And make sure you check out our Cooking with Christ video series that also highlights important stories in Jesus's life with a family focus and an edible craft. Those episodes are available now on our Facebook page, YouTube channel, and website. This afternoon, we invite you to join us for our prayer drive event at Clear Lake City Elementary at one o'clock, anytime from one o'clock to two o'clock. Prayer stations will be set up around the school and through their parking lot to pray for the students, staff, and safety of the school. The first station will be at the stop sign on Reseda and Torrey Pines closest to the church. You can preview the full prayer route on our website, clearlakemethodist.org. And now let's close our worship experience with Silent Night. 